which looks like this. You see the price bounces off the support and resistance line and that's where you can take advantage of this pattern. So you can enter the market somewhere in between. Once you see the price successfully bounces off the support and the configuration may look like this. And you set the stop loss below the support line just to ensure that you have full control over your funds and that if the if the pattern fails basically if the support line does not sustain then at least you have this sell um, stop loss order to to cover you okay so this is a configuration that you can use once you expect the market to continue this sideways uh, movement. So that's the distribution phase, right? And that's the accumulation phase. Okay. So depending on the crypto that you analyze, they can be in different market stages. So make sure you fully understand how to determine market phases and you can take advantage of using different patterns that will tell you if the market is in the sideways or in the advancing mode so for example what is typical for the advancing mode and for the advancing we stick with the classic configuration because because the classic board distributes your investments so that it always buys and sells the same amount of crypto. So imagine if the price goes higher, that means that the price appreciates. And now in order to buy the same amount of crypto that it used to buy before at lower levels, it has to spend more investment, right? So that's why in case of the classic board, when the price is moving higher, then you basically increase your uh, stake in the basically increase your risk exposure because now you uh, have more base currency whereas in case of the as bot uh, it it just spends the same amount of investment to each level so of course if the price appreciates now in order to buy crypto with the same amount it used to buy it let's say let's say it always spends ten dollars Okay, so that means that when the price moves higher, now you can buy fewer coins. And that's why as it goes higher, you buy fewer coins. That's why your risk exposure here is limited in case of the SBOT. So that's why it turns out that the SBOT is optimal for the sideways market, whereas the classic bot is optimal for the rising market. So here's the example actually for you. You see, that's the sideways phase. And that was basic attention token trading to USDT. And that's the result for the SBOT. It was 3% for the period of 13 days. And the same period, the same date range, the same market phase, but with the classic bot. In this case, only 2%. So clearly what we see here is that on the sideways formation, as both outstrips the classic mode, all right? Whereas in case of the, where is this example that I have? In, the, in case of the market is rising, what you will see is that the classic board significantly outstrips the as board because as I said earlier when the price goes higher then it, it's, it, it buys basically it increases your risk exposure whereas as bot always spends the same amount of investment that's why for the as bot when the price goes higher it buys fewer coins whereas in case of the classic bot it always buys the same amount of crypto so that's why on the rising market you have a bigger risk exposure in the classic configuration so that's why you see here the same period for xrp usdt but classic generated 70 percent whereas asbot generated only 53 percent so that's the tool i'm using here is basically the backtest tool the one that you can find here it says backtest 
so you can set any amount of grid levels and you can backtest this strategy for any period but the maximum period is just one month so you see I'm now able to backtest this strategy to basically to see um, what would be the performance of my bot if I would have launched it one month ago so from 12th of February to the 11th of no, actually 12th of January until today so the result would be let's see it would be 9% okay and you see exactly which price it would purchase and at which price it would sell the crypto so everything is fully transparent you can backtest any strategy to see if this crypto in this case that's cardano to use it works for you so are you satisfied with this return and are you satisfied with the market volatility of around in this case that's 200 percent but it's not something that you see every month right but still uh, you can use all the tools that you have here to see what is the upside potential during this period and what was the downside potential so at least you can use this as a benchmark to project what would like possibly be the uh, volatility for the next month so you, you just you just look for the pattern on the market if you see that for example for cardana it usually moves let's say 15 percent intraday and it falls intraday also somewhere around 15 percent then you can project that in the future it's gonna move somewhere in this range as well so you must ask yourself can you tolerate the risk of the price of the crypto falling by 15 percent one day and rising 15 percent next so if you can handle this risk then in this case you can stick with cardano if not then just go and look what other cryptos can offer you just using the backtest tool and the cool thing about the backtest tool is that you can compare uh, different configurations with one another and most importantly you can compare the same configuration on different cryptocurrencies to see the results and compare them to find your best crypto you want to stick with okay just using the back test tool everything is here all integrity all, and all the metrics that you need to figure out if this is something you want to trade or you'd rather find another better one option for you so so once you decided which strategy you want to stick to let's say from the current price i expect the market to to start moving in this sideways so like like this okay so that's why i know that sbot is perfect for the sideways so that's why i choose sbot and now is the time to figure out what is the amount of grid levels that i want to plot so the, as like the simplest way for you to define the amount of grid levels to use like the best like it's not the best one but one of the most optimal ones is you can use this tool which is the uh, price range and you you just m move it from the lower price up to the upper price so that means that here you expect the range of around 90 percent so if i plot around 70 grid levels that's going to be around one percent of a return per each grid level so that means that grid levels are located uh, from each other by 0.91 percent so the difference between your grid levels is 0.91 percent and by the way it takes into account the fee that you have to pay so in reality it's around one percent but since you have to pay the fee that's why it's 0 0.91 okay so we calculate this for you uh, 
so that all the returns that you see you see the bot profit that's the net that's the net profit net of all fees and check this out here field orders you see fees they are already priced in this. so the product you see it's net of all fees so that's another cool thing that we have in this gap is that here is once again full transparency and information like the return generated is exactly what you will see on your balance as you go and open your Binance account. So um, that's like the, the rule you can use. Like to see volatility, you expect like the range is 90 percent and set around 70 or 80 grid levels. If you want your uh, grid return to be around 1 percent, right? So. That's the general rule for you to apply. Let's use another one. Let's say lead trading to Bitcoin. So what I see here, okay, so let's, no, let's actually choose another one which has a longer track record. So that's one, one here. It actually looks pretty okay. That's XVG trading to Ethereum. So let's zoom out and chart a bit. Let's change the time frame to two hours. Yeah. So you see, it, it pretty much is moving in this sideways. Let's see what is the volatility, like the, the, the price range. See, it's around 90%. So for this one, if you want to have around 1% of a return for each great execution, then that's going to be around 70 as well. You see, it's around 1%. 64, 68, and you can see like, almost exactly 1%. So that's how you can use it. What you also have to remember is that if you drag your lower price, let's say, to that point, you see now you reduce the amount of buy limit orders. So that's why now you need to allocate fewer of the full currency whereas more goes to the sell side the same applies to the upper price if you drag it lower and basically reduce the range of your sell side that's why you see now fewer base currency is required to initiate this point right so that's the way you can use this uh, tool the one I have here, which is price range. You define the volatility of your range. That's right up here is 26%. If you want to have 1%, then it's going to be around 20. Actually, it's 18. Yeah, 25. So close to this percent. Uh, why not exactly 26? even though we see that the volatility is 26%. That's because, once again, the fee you have to pay is already priced in. So that's why we set fewer grid levels to make sure it's 1%. Uh, yeah, so that's regarding the amount of grid levels you set. So once you define the trading range and the amount of grid levels you are ready to go, now you see the investment that will be allocated can make it lower, but in case if you want, let's say, to plot 60 grid levels with the investment of only 368 USDT, you will see that it's not enough to plot 60 grid levels because for each grid level there is a minimum investment uh, size, which, if I'm not mistaken, on Binance or most cryptos. It's around 10 USDT. So you see, it requires more experience to plot all of these 60 levels within this trading window. So, what you can do, if you still want to stick with investment of 368, then just reduce the amount of grid levels. For some reason, it does not show me the button which is known as adjust grid quantity. That's why I will refresh the page, but Still, you can do it manually. See, 30 doesn't work. 20 doesn't work. So 10 works. What about 15? Doesn't work. So you see that for this configuration, you can only set 10. 
Okay. And that's that's actually the refresh the page. Because it should actually show you the just by grid levels. But from here. Just say FTM to Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. You see, for example, this one has 179 grid levels, which for this amount of investment is too much. And you adjust the grid quantities. And now, with this same investment, you have got 113 grid levels. What happens if you increase the amount of grid levels, let's say, to 50? You see, no longer possible because your investment is not You adjust to see how you can launch it. So, drag the line, and now you can start the bot. Okay? The idea here is that since you have sell limit quantities, in order to sell something, you must possess the base accounts, right? So that's why if you don't have at your disposal this amount of FTMs, then it will require you to buy at the market by order. Okay? So like this, I click on start. See, it asks me to buy the amount of FTMs required to plot all these selling orders you can say yes or you can actually uh, spend less on fees just by going to trading and here you can buy with a limited buy order the required amount of FTM so it was like around 5,000 right so current price so here you can buy it with a limited buy order we do remember that buying something or selling something in the limit order, this uh, spends less, that basically you have to spend less on these. Whereas market orders, they are first priority orders. That's why for this instant execution, you spend more fees. So let's go back to boss. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a question, uh, can you use the bot with finance futures? And I have the answer for this one. Actually, we are about to launch a second trading desk just for futures. So you can actually uh, initiate bots on futures as well. But that's something that is incoming in just a few weeks, I assume. But yeah, this this is definitely something that we will soon be able to trade. And for that, we will have different webcasts where I will show you tips and tricks and what basically you have to do when trading futures boards because the algorithm that will be utilized there is, uh, is a bit different compared with the original one that was here, so I will explain to you. So no worries, this is something that we will soon be able to trade. Okay, cool. Um, what else should I cover most of them? So, yeah, we covered that in order to trade bots, with bots actually, you must define the market phase. So for the as bot is perfect, and you spot the distribution phase and the accumulation phase. The body classic is perfect one is advancing, right? Of course, you don't want to trade on the declining market, but even on the declining market, if you were, let's say, unfortunate to predict the uh, price direction and the, the market started to move downwards instead of continuing the rally, then even on the downfall, both could form better than compared with an ordinary hodl strategy so you see here as example just pay your attention to the chart first you see imagine that you buy quantum here and you see hodl and then you just hold it expecting the market to rally so that you will be able to fix some returns but what happens is that it falls and now you are in minus 6.88 percent 
loss. Whereas if you would have launched the bot instead of just holding the crypto, then it would offset this downfall because you see it would have traded for you during this downfall and the, the profit generated would offset the total negative change of the base currency and that's why you would have only minus 3% compared with minus 6.88%. So even though, of course, on the downfall, you will have a negative investment change because currently the crypto falls. But still, it's better than if you would just buy the crypto and hold it in your portfolio. Make sure that you stick with the proper strategy. If you want to generate stable returns and to minimize the loss, then automation is something that you should consider because even on the downfall it significantly uh, offsets, offsets the negative value change of the base currency what you see is that your investment change is only minus three percent whereas it could be minus seven percent so definitely automation wins over the simple hold strategy so um, Let's see if we have some interesting questions. Looking out. So yeah, I mentioned exit strategies. Now let's go and cover these exit strategies. So we have five options for you to exit the market. Remember in the pattern setup that I demonstrated to you, this one, I have what is known as the stop loss. You see? So in case if the strategy does not sustain, if the support is, is broken, then you have the stop loss, which is the first exit strategy. In this case, the board will exit the market by selling all of the base currency that got stuck in the strategy at the time the price reached the stop loss. And that's exactly what you can see over here. For example, for Theta, do I have this stop loss? Yes, I do have. So that's exactly at this price. So if the price falls from the current level to this level, then it will automatically sell all of the base currency, which you will see over here in the details. And by that, uh, it ensures that you have 100% exit from the market. And another exit strategy, what we have is this one it just cancels all of your open orders so if you no longer want the board to uh, execute trades then you can cancel all open orders by canceling all of the open orders you do not get rid of your base currency so it, it stays on your balance so for example these are trading to bitcoin and one i have you see i have 322 thetas so if I close this board with cancel all open orders, then in this case it will help trading, but the amount of base currency is going to stay on my balance. That means that I have to remember that I have theta on my balance, which fluctuates every day. So if the price can fall, that means that my value of my portfolio will fall, and if it goes higher, then it will appreciate. If you no longer want to be exposed to theta price fluctuation, then make sure that right after you cancel all of the open orders, you just sell all of the theta or sell the amount that you want to get rid of. Okay? So that's the second strategy for you to consider. That you can cancel the bot, but you can uh, leave some of the base currency on your balance. Okay? So the third option to exit the market is the take profit. So the take profit is basically when the investment change, that's the third column, reaches a specific um, percentage that you set, it will automatically close the bot and it will sell all the, sell all of the base currency. So for example, feed the trains with Bitcoin. Do I have the take profit? No, I don't. But here I can always set it. So let's say as soon as it reaches 
it will automatically sell all of the base currencies. Right now it's 30%. As soon as it reaches 40, it will just sell all the base currency and it will cancel all of the open orders in this case. Okay. And another way for you to uh, exit from the market is refresh the page because it's for some reason a bit lame. The fourth option will actually we covered four of them on it. So that was the the uh, market sell. It was the cancel all open orders. Second one, the stop loss is number three. The number four is take profit, and number five is something that I'm not able to show you right now because that's the option that you have if you see your investment change in the negative side. So if you see minus, let's say minus 10%, then you get this third option to exit the market, which is the break even exit. So break even exit is basically the exit from the market with a 0% of a return, all right? So let's say you, you start trading somewhere at that point so and at that point over here you enter the market it started to fall drastically okay but still the boy is trading for you now you are in the minus in the negative zone let's say you are having a loss of minus 10 percent in total so if you want to exit this trade so you no longer believe it will rally significantly like this then you can bet on that before continue the downfall, it will swing back a, a, a bit. And you can take advantage of this possible swing back because here is where exactly you can exit from the market with a 0% return. So the board will estimate at which price level you need, well, basically at which price level it reaches the 0% of the return. So if you don't want to bear a loss, like, what you can do is to hope for an option to exit with the 0%. And for that, you must see the price to bounce off back, basically to appreciate a bit. So it automatically estimates the price of the break even where your investment is going to be 0%. But still, it's kind of a risk because it will, might never reach this point of breaking the price where your investment is 0%. And it may be that it will fall even further and you got stuck with your negative investment change. So that's the option that you should consider if you expect the price to, to bounce off back a bit before it continues the downfall and by having this expectation that it reverts back you have this chance of closing the board with a zero percent of the return all right so the system automatically estimates at which exact price the market should reach where you will get your investment of zero percent okay so these are five exit strategies that we have so far and depending on market conditions and the volatility, stick with the right one. Okay. So to maximize your returns, that's going to be now another topic of today's webcast, we have this tool which is known as Trading Hub. So the cool thing about the Trading Hub is that once the price reaches the uh, upper limit price, which is over here, you see, the highest sell point, if, it, if the price breaches it like this, then in, in an ordinary scenario where you don't have the trading hub on, the board would halt trading right at that point. So it won't continue trading for you as the price has reached the upper limit. So 
Whereas when you have the trailing up on, that means that your trailing range, which is right now over here, it will follow the market. And that's something that I can demonstrate to you right here. So just quickly say initially your trading range is here, lower upper limit prices. Imagine the price establishes new higher highs. What's going to happen when you have your trading up on? Then the trading range will follow the market like this. Imagine it goes higher again. Of course, it will follow the rally as you have your trading up on. But if the price falls from that point, this is where the board will not follow the downfall because that's why it's called trading up, as it only follows the market rally. And in this case, this is the area where you won't see the board trading for you. If the price comes back to the trading range, this is where the board will continue trading for you. Imagine the price makes a new higher high, of course the trading range will follow the market. So basically, this tool is the one I always use because it can be that when I'm away from the computer or let's say I'm, I'm asleep, it can be that at this time the price is moving like crazy upwards. And in order to ensure that I always participate in this rally, make sure to have this trading up on because it follows the market trend. It just readjusts the trading range in accordance with the rally. Okay. Otherwise, if you are not using the trading up, what you might see is something that I have over here. You see, out of range. IMZ trading to See the status range, it means it's no longer trading. So let's see why it is no longer trading. And here's why. You see, initially my trading range was over here. So once the price breached the upper limit price, it held the, tr the trading because I did not have my trading up on for this configuration. You see, I was lucky enough to, to enter the market at the right time, but it was a mistake to forget about the trading up because I missed this rally from $1 up to 15 as of today. See, this is missed opportunity here, okay? So if you are not monitoring the market, you, maybe you don't have time, maybe you have another job to do. Trading for you is just a hobby or, or basically the activity that you have to uh, accumulate on your investments, then you have this trading up instrument to make sure that even when you are away from the laptop and you are not able to analyze the market, it will follow the rally if it breaks new higher high okay so of course for those who are monitoring the market on a daily basis you can just close the board as soon as it breaches the upper limit price in order to open a new one with a new trading range the one that you want based on your preferences where you put basically where you set the upper price and lower price so in my case, I prefer to stick with the uh, upper limit price defined by the resistance and the lower limit price defined by the support, right? So for example, over here the support is in this area and resistance is, well, if to avoid this anomaly over here, then it will be around this range. Uh, for example, right now, if you look at zero x trading to USDT, what you will spot is this triangle ascending pattern, which basically means that neither the bulls nor the bears are in control of the market. So that means if we will see the breakout and the price moves higher from that point, that's going to be an upward signal for us.
as well. It's like from, from this statistical standpoint, most likely the value will continue. Whereas it can be the case that it, that it breaks the ascending support line over here, and this is going to be a bearish signal in that case. Okay. So depending on the the tools that you use to find the best price to enter and exit the market, set the configuration accordingly. So from my experience, it turns out that uh, looking for patterns on the market is the best way to find the best price to enter and the best price to exit the market. So right now, this looks like the uh, consolidation phase and once it breaks the resistance or the support, this is where you can enter the market with a proper configuration. So some strategies I provided you with, for example this one, that's for the rising market, so once you see the price successfully bounces off the support again, so you can enter at the breakout over here, as you see, that's the exact pattern formation that's known as free balance pattern. So this is where you can enter the market with this configuration at, at this point of breakout of the previous higher high. So there are different ways for you to ex enter and exit the market. Just make sure that your uh, risk is justified. So it, it, it makes no sense to enter the market where your risk is too high. So for example, here you see in this configuration, my stop loss is quite close enough to my entry point. So this is a pretty justifiable risk to enter the market, okay? Because you see, if it breaks the support, then here I have my stop loss and I will not participate in the downfall further, okay? So always make sure that you stick with the basic risk management tools, which is in this case, the stop loss, and to maximize your returns, make sure that you stick with the training up instrument. So let's see what are the questions that we have. So regarding the question of the trailing down, no, it's not the problem to implement this instrument. It's just that the decision of our IT department was that it like 